in your opinion, how exactly the importing of the high food technology is going to help people in Zambia? As mentioned earlier, that I've been on the lookout. HIFO is being used for management of fibroid uterus. And currently, the management in our country, we do mostly open surgery. We have a few where they do laparoscopic surgery, and very few they do uh, interventional radiology, and mostly it's by embolization. Now, open surgery has got its own challenges. One of them is that if the fibroids are big, you need to have a blood transfusion in order for you to do the operation successfully, as you cannot assure the patient that they won't bleed quite a lot. And because of that, there are some patients who either take long to be treated or may be denied treatment because of lack of availability of blood. Remember, blood is used for so many other conditions and we know having a fibroid uterus may not necessarily be a life-threatening condition. So because it's not a life-threatening condition, it's actually relegated. It's only done when we have got excess blood to give them. Now with the HIFU, you are able to do it without the need of blood, without competing for theater space, with the just enough skills to understand the anatomy and the disease process of the HIFU. And the, the other advantage is that the, with little damage, if any, to the uterus itself, meaning that it would, be, it would still be used as a childbearing organ. As the high food technology was imported in Mexico from Chongqing, more and more patients around the globe could benefit from this technology. What do you see on the influence of Chongqing's medical advances in improving the health care in Africa? I've mentioned to say that in Africa we are dependent on the open surgery and the people have to travel long distances and so on. So we will free some hands that do open surgery by introducing this interventional, uh, in, interventional imaging or interventional radiology. So that way it means we'll save on theater space, save on the scarce materials that are used for, that are accompanying the operation. Remember, we are not using anesthesia. We don't need a skilled theater nurse. We don't need a lot of hospital bed space. So you've, with limited health resources in Africa, this will actually save on that because the fibroid patients will be managed like any other medical patient, not needing surgical space. In the time that every country in the world is fighting the pandemic together, what's your expectations about the cooperation between Zambia and China, especially with Chongqing? The last visit I had in September, actually I came to visit a company that was responsible for manufacturing of face masks. If you remember at that particular time, there was a shortage of PPEs worldwide. And Chongqing actually offered to say, we have face masks that we can help Zambia. Now, we know that the COVID-19 is not the only disease. Much as we came here because of the pandemic, we were able to see that there is also HIFU that does exist. So, pandemic, the pandemic, much as it is a world problem, it has also created an opportunity in other areas. This time, Zambia will know more about HIFU because of the pandemic. Because had it not been for the pandemic, I wouldn't have had come here. Uh 
大肌瘤的患者都面临着失去生育能力或失去子宫的风险。OK， 那我们已经成功的在南非。北非和尼日利亚啊，已经建立了三家临床应用中心。那么，从我们现在临床应用的情况来看，这个技术是非常适宜于非洲患者的一个一项无创的治疗技术啊。那么，更重要的是，我们在呃把这个技术啊传播到输入到非洲的过程中间，我们是把整个的医疗服务体系。啊，输送到呃呃非洲，也就是教会当地的非洲的医生和医生的呃临床团队使用这个技术服务于他们的患者。同时呢，我们也通过呃在卫生部科技部的项目的支持下，也把我们的培训和我们的这个呃临床培训的呃体系。啊、呃，能够嫁接到非洲，好让更多的非洲的医生能够学习和了解这个技术，掌握这个技术，好以他们的方式，熟悉的方式，啊、呃，服务于非洲的呃患者。